things don't get too exciting until you start accelerating, like you do in your Ferrari. So the sprinter, as he explodes out of the starting blocks, here are the blocks, his velocity is changing. Well, how do you know that? <laughs> well, you know it because he started out with zero velocity, and, all, and then he's, he's moving pretty fast. In fact, I was once at a, at a race very close to the track, a, a collegiate 100 meter race, and it was almost scary to see those huge men uh, thundering past me at a high speed. So they definitely acquire high speed. The way they do it is by accelerating. So we'll give a very precise mathematical definition to, to the word acceleration, but it'll be very similar to the, um, uh, the, the conception that you have about acceleration already. So if the velocity is changing, that's the key point. If the velocity is changing, then there will be an acceleration. All right, so let me demonstrate using this YouTube video the displacement, velocity, and acceleration. We're going to talk about displacement, velocity, and acceleration using this track. What I'd like for you to imagine is a coordinate system that starts right here with the x-axis going in this direction to your right. Displacements um, that occur in the, in the plus x direction are considered to be positive. Displacements in the negative x direction are considered to be negative. Um, a displacement divided by a time gives a velocity. So a displacement divided by a positive uh, change in time, uh, the velocity will be positive in this direction, negative in this direction. How does acceleration work? Acceleration is a change in velocity divided by the time. So if the velocity is increasing in this direction, meaning it's accelerating in this direction, that is a positive acceleration. If instead the velocity is decreasing in this direction, namely it's going fast and then slowing down, that indicates a negative acceleration in the minus x direction. There's another way to get a, a negative acceleration, and that is to um, slow down to the point where the, the cart stops, and then it starts going in the opposite direction. So we've got a fast velocity here, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, stopping, turning around, going back the other direction. All of these would have a, a negative acceleration um, in, an, in the negative x direction. So let's actually define the acceleration. Define, and guess what? We're going to do the average acceleration, and then guess what? We're going to do the instantaneous acceleration. So it would be a very similar process. We'll take the limit as the elapsed time goes to zero to get the instantaneous acceleration from the average acceleration, just like we did with velocity. The average acceleration vector is the change in the velocity divided by the elapsed time. So the elapsed time, that's easy. T minus T naught. And, um, but what's this change in velocity? Well, delta, as always, means final minus initial, means change in. So this will mean the final velocity, v, minus the initial velocity, v naught. Final minus initial, always consistent with delta. What are the units of acceleration? Well, velocity is measured in meters per second. And so a change in a velocity of one velocity minus another will also still be measured in meters per second. A time will be measured in seconds. So you got meters per second per second, sometimes written as meters per second per second, like this. But it can also be written as meters 
per second squared. Both of these S's are in the denominator. So it's, it's units are meters per second squared. Um, and that's pretty much it, honestly. The bar over the top means, the bar over the top of the acceleration means the average, exactly. A with the error over it means the acceleration vector, so it must have a direction. And then its components you find by just putting a subscript x and then finding the component of the change in the velocity. And that's just the change in the x component of the velocity. Same thing with y. So this graphical representation does the same thing that the, the graphical representation that we did for the displacement vector. The displacement, displacement vector pointed from the tip of the initial position to the tip of the final position. Well, this delta v points from the tip of the initial velocity to the tip of the final velocity. And the algebra, if you take this vector v naught, add it to delta v, you're adding tip to tail, so uh, add the tail of delta v to the tip, uh, place the tail of delta v on the tip of v naught, and then draw the resultant vector from here to here that says that the velocity vector is v, the final velocity is v naught plus delta v. And then we can solve this for delta v by subtracting v naught from both sides. And that's exactly what we have right here. You say, so this graphical representation exactly captures what we've done mathematically here. And I say, yes, it does. But the important thing here is that this delta v, the average, uh, the average acceleration vector, it's a vector, and its direction is shared with the direction of the change in the velocity. So if you tell me how the velocity is changing, then I can tell you the direction of the average acceleration. And that change in velocity, remember, is, is only going to be calculated if you place the two velocity vectors tail to tail. So I'm going to have my initial velocity vector here, my final velocity vector here, and, um, and then I, I draw the change in velocity, which is proportional to the average acceleration, from the tip of the initial to the tip of the final. Okay, a couple of examples. Uh, let's do a one-dimensional example from chapter two. This is the equation we wrote down for the average acceleration in the x direction. So you can say the average acceleration in the x direction. You can say the x component of the average acceleration. Either way works just fine. Well, delta vx is the final x component of velocity minus the initial x component of velocity. And, and these are all the x components, x direction all through here. So if you want to find the acceleration of this, uh, of this ship from the initial to some final time, then what you're going to need are the final velocity and the initial velocity in the x direction divided by the elapsed time. Let's actually put some numbers in. Determine the average acceleration of an airplane that accelerates from zero kilometers per hour to 260 kilometers per hour in 29 seconds. Well, here's the initial velocity in the x direction. Let's say the initial time is zero seconds. Then the final time would be 29 seconds, because we said it took 29 seconds. And the final speed, final velocity, in the x direction is 260 kilometers per hour. Let's plug the numbers in. Here's the equation. 
the x component of average acceleration. So there's the x component of the average acceleration. That's where all those symbols come into play. Is the final x component of velocity, vx, is 260. So that's a that number there. The initial component of velocity, which is 0, divided by the final time minus the initial time. That's 29 minus 0. And that gives me 9.0 kilometers per hour per second. Now those are a little weird units. We could certainly convert this to meters per second squared, but for now I don't want to. And the reason is, I want to show you what this really means. If we look at the first few seconds of this acceleration of this airplane, what this means is that during each second, So I'm explaining what this equation means. During each second, the x velocity of the jet increases by 9 kilometers per hour. So here's the second s, and here's the 9 kilometers per hour. So if you look at this second by second, initially its uh, x component of velocity is 0. But after one second, its x component of velocity is 9 kilometers per hour. After two seconds, its x component of velocity is 9 plus 9 is 18. And after three seconds, it would be 18 plus another 9 kilometers per hour would be 27. This is usually not the best way of solving problems. However, um, it's a useful way of thinking about what acceleration is. It's how the velocity is changing with time. If this um, jet is moving along at a constant velocity, what will its acceleration be? And you say zero, and you're right. All right, and here's the conversion to the usual units of meters per second squared. Um, a thousand meters per kilometer, so the kilometers will cancel. Um, and then we need to convert hours to seconds. There's an hour in the, in the denominator, and here's an hour in the numerator. And this will give us, at the end of the day, meters per second. So I just need to multiply 9 by 1,000 and divide by 3,600, and you get 2.5 meters per second squared. All right, uh, a couple of clicker questions. Um, starting from rest, a particle confined to move along a straight line is accelerated at a rate of 2 meters per second squared. Which one of the following statements accurately describes the motion of this particle? The particle m travels two meters during each second. No, it's accelerating. So it might be moving more than two me meters in some seconds or less in others. So that's false. Particle travels two meters only during the first second. It doesn't really say that. What this says, the speed of the particle increases by 2 meters per second during each second. And this is what it does say. The speed, and I might correct this to say the x component of velocity, but it's if, if, the x if it's only in the x direction, then speed and velocity uh, the speed and the x component of velocity are one and the same. But the speed is the velocity of the speed is going to increase by two meters per second during each second. So during the first second, it'll be two meters per second. Uh, during the next second, it'll be four meters per during, uh, after at the end of the second second, be four meters per second. Um, after another second has passed, it'll be going six meters per second. It increases, you add them up. The acceleration of the particle increases by two meters per second squared during each second. That's not what it says. 
and then final speed of the particle will be proportional to the distance that the particle covers. Uh, that's also not necessarily true. In fact, it's not true. All right. Uh, as the bald eagle comes in for the landing, it's slowing down. It's got its wings out. Um, it's slowing down. Therefore, it has an acceleration. We don't call it a deceleration. We just call it a negative acceleration. Okay? It's kind of like uh, you don't really need the direction of west. All you need is negative east. You don't need south either. It's just negative north. But just trying to boil things into their simplest possible um, parts. So its acceleration vector is pointing opposite to the velocity vector. The velocity is coming in like this. That's the direction of his motion, but he's slowing down, and so its acceleration vector is going in the opposite direction. So let's look at a car that's slowing down and actually calculate the average acceleration. Dragster applies the brakes, deploys a parachute, uh, beginning when his stopwatch reads 9 seconds, his speed is 28 meters per second, and ending when his stopwatch reads 12 seconds and his speed is 13 meters per second. What's the average acceleration? Just plug in the numbers, it's not that big a deal. The final velocity is 13 meters per second, Vx. The initial velocity is 28 meters per second. Final time is 12 seconds. Initial time is 9 seconds on the stopwatch. Plug the numbers in, you get a negative 5 meters per second squared. We should be embarrassed by that negative sign, right? No, we're not embarrassed by negative signs. We love them. We embrace them. What does it tell you? It tells you that the acceleration is in the negative x direction. So if this is the plus x direction, its acceleration, its velocity, is in the plus x direction, but its acceleration is in negative x direction. These two are, are opposite to each other. And if this is the x direction, the acceleration being pointed in the negative x direction, its component in the negative x direction, this guy here, I mean, sorry, the component of the average acceleration in the x direction has to be negative because the acceleration is pointing in the minus x direction. It's slowing down. Detana, define, like I promised, we're going to do the instantaneous acceleration vector, its components and its magnitude. This one's about basically a repeat of what we did with the instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous acceleration vector is defined as the average acceleration vector in the limit of small elapsed, elapsed time. Here's the average acceleration vector. It's the change in the velocity divided by the change in time. And we're going to take the limit as that elapsed time gets shrunk down to zero. So instead of talking about an initial and a final time, we're just talking about an instant in time, which we can take to be the, in uh, the initial time. It has compo So we don't need a bar over the top. We're talking about instantaneous. And you can call this the instantaneous acceleration or just the acceleration. Normally, if we just say the word acceleration, we mean instantaneous acceleration. So here are its components measured in meters per second squared. Here it's magnitude. Um, so now there's really three vectors that describe, that follow a particle around as it moves through space. Imagine this as a, as a fly that's moving around through the room. The position vector always starts at the origin and points to the current location of the fly, wherever it is in, in, in the room. The velocity vector gives the direction of motion of the fly as it's moving. So that means if, if this is true here, this diagram is true, then the fly must be moving in that direction, in the direction of the red arrow. Then the acceleration vector, this guy here, shown in the dark green arrow, gives the way that the velocity is changing. And I want to talk a little bit more about this. 
But what this is saying is that that velocity is going to get tipped over in this direction. That acceleration is trying to change that velocity. So what you might be expecting is the trajectory of the fly will be going around like this. OK, and this is what I wanted to, to, to kind of give, give you an idea. If you, can, if you can inscribe this idea into your brain, then you'll understand these two chapters so well. And it will help you when you do chapter 5 on circular motion and many other chapters. This is an important slide. The acceleration vector points in the direction that the velocity is changing. Remember that the acceleration vector is the limit as delta t goes to 0 of the change in the velocity divided by the change in time. And please, don't leave those vectors off. Um, some, some math teachers will, will leave them off, but man alive, uh, it's so easy to get confused. As soon as you leave that vector arrow off of there, you think it's speed, and then you're um, not in Kansas anymore, that's for sure. So this acceleration vector is proportional to and in the direction of the change in the velocity. In the limit, the delta t goes to 0. So if I can find the change in the velocity, then I know what direction the acceleration is in. Let's take a couple of different scenarios. And remember that the change in the velocity vector goes from the, you have to put these two vectors, the initial velocity and the final, vector, final velocity vector, tail to tail. And then the change in velocity goes from the tip of the initial velocity to the tip or the head of the final velocity vector. OK, what about if the acceleration is parallel to the velocity? Here's. Um, the initial, well, let's just look at these two vectors, v0 and v, and imagine them being overlapping with each other. So imagine this being overlapped with that, but I separated them out so you could see both vectors. This is the final. The change in the velocity and the acceleration point from the tip of the initial, or the head of the initial velocity vector to the head of the final velocity vector. So this is a case where the acceleration, so the acceleration is in this direction also. It's not equal to the acceleration, but it's proportional to, is that what that symbol means? Here's where the acceleration is parallel to the velocity. The velocity's uh, direction is staying the same, but the speed increases. So we're starting from here. This is the dragster case where you're over here in a car, you step on the gas, you're increasing your velocity, your acceleration is, in the, is parallel to your velocity. You're accelerating. If the acceleration is anti-parallel, so here's my initial, it's a, it's a high velocity represented by a longer vector, arrow. And this is the final velocity, it's less. And so delta v, going from the tip of the initial to the tip of the final is pointing in the direction opposite to it. So this is an acceleration that's anti-parallel to the velocity. The velocity direction is staying the same and the speed decreases. This is sometimes called deceleration. And finally, this one will be important with cha in chapter 5. If the acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity, and I'd like to ask you, man, if you're doing something, grab a donut or something to wake up at this point, because this is a really important point. Um, the if the acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity, so here's the delta v, which is proportional to the acceleration. If it's perpendicular to the velocity, so if this is a right angle, then what happens? The velocity direction changes. In all of these cases, the velocity direction hasn't changed. V0 and V are both to the right. V0 and V are both to the right. Here, V0 is to the right, but V is not to the right. It's to the right and a little bit down. It got changed. The direction of the velocity got changed. So 
if the acceleration and the velocity are perpendicular to each other, then the speed, the magnitude of the velocity, can stay the same, but the direction of the velocity changes. What that says is that you can get an acceleration that will change both the magnitude of the velocity, and you can also get an acceleration that changes the direction of the velocity. If the direction of the velocity is changing, then the object is accelerating. Very important point. All right, a couple clicker questions. In, wh in which of the following situations does the car have an acceleration that is directed due north? <coughs> Pause. You figure it out. Back. Car travels northward. All right, let's do north, south. South is just negative north, remember? East and west, which is negative east. It's traveling northward with a constant speed of 24 meters per second. Um, so that's its velocity vector, and it's constant. It's 24 meters per second. Well, if it's constant, it's not changing. And the delta v, the change in v, is going to be a big fat zero. And um, this is, has an acceleration of zero. So that's not possibly it. A car is traveling southward as its speed increases from 24 meters per second to 33 meters per second. Okay, now we're talking about a velocity that's going south. And its speed is increasing from 24 meters per second to 33 meters per second. So this is V naught, and this is V. That's the initial. That's the final. And if we place those two tail to tail, then the delta V vector and the acceleration are going to be pointing southward. But we're actually looking for an acceleration that's northward. So this, is, this gives an, uh, an acceleration to the south. Uh, how about C? So that's not it. Car is traveling southward as its speed decreases from 24 meters per second to 18 meters per second. All right, so let's do another diagram. There's north. Here's east. It's traveling southward. Our initial velocity vector is 24 meters per second. Our final velocity vector is 18 meters per second. And I'm just drawing a shorter arrow here to represent the fact that the speed here, the magnitude of the velocity, is less than the initial. Well, we need to draw a delta v from the tip of the initial to the tip of the final. Here's the tip of the initial. Here's the tip of the final. Delta v is going to look like that. What's the direction of delta v in this case? It's north. So this is true. The acceleration is north. Car is traveling northward as the speed decreases from 24 meters per second to 18 meters per second. I think you're getting the idea here. You're going north. <coughs> its speed is decreasing. What's the direction of the acceleration? South. Exactly. And a car travels southward with a constant speed of 24 meters per second. That gives zero acceleration. And here, the acceleration is south. And I'll leave it to you to draw a diagram for case D. Which of the following situations does uh, the object have no acceleration? The ball at the end of a string is whirled in a horizontal circle at a constant speed. So I've got, a, I've got a string here. I'm whirling a ball around at the end of the string. Um, tell me about the, the speed. Is it changing? No, it's at constant speed. Is the velocity direction changing? Yeah, when the ball is here, it's, it's going in that direction. When it's over here, it's going in this direction. So the velocity direction is changing. It is accelerating. And in fact, the acceleration is toward the center. 
as we'll see in chapter 5. There is an acceleration because the direction of the velocity is changing. Engrave that in your brains, please. Seeing a red traffic light ahead, the driver of the minivan steps on the brake. As a result, the minivan slows from 15 meters per second to a stop before reaching the light. Uh, is it does it have an acceleration? Well, sure it does. It, it's uh, pointing backward. A boulder starts from rest and begins rolling down a steep mountain. That has an acceleration. Elevator moves upward at a constant speed. All right, here's the key on this one. It's moving at a constant speed. So this is the elevator. It's moving three meters per second here. It's moving three meters per second here. The initial velocity is the same as the velo final velocity. There's no acceleration. So this is the, the correct answer. There's no acceleration in an elevator that's moving at a constant speed. Now, now remember, we're not talking about when you get into the elevator and you push the button and you feel uh, for a higher floor. You feel the floor pushing you up and accelerating you. We're not talking about that few first few instants uh, of time while you're in the elevator. We're talking about what's happening once you've gotten up to speed and you're, and you're cruising along between the floors as you're moving at constant speed. You're not accelerating in that case because your velocity is not changing. <coughs> Ball is thrown upward from the surface of the earth, slows to a temporary stop at a height of four meters and begins to fall backward down toward the, the earth. So it's going faster, slower, slower, reaches the top, Faster, faster, faster coming down. That velocity vector is always changing, including at the top. And we'll talk more about this. Um, at the top of that trajectory, the velocity, is, the velocity is, is zero right at the top of that trajectory. But the, the velocity is changing from positive to negative. It is changing. It is accelerating. Were it not so, this ball would stay up there forever and would never come down.